Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I am, I have been working on this for days and I'm so excited to show it to you guys. So this is a new flippy flap Christmas folio. I'm gonna show you how it opens up. And this is gonna be part one in a two part uh, tutorial showing you how to make one of these. We're gonna construct it today. And then in tomorrow's video, we will decorate it and add some of the little extras and things. So it opens a couple of different ways. The first way is it opens like this. And there's a great big pocket here for extra paper, uh, letters, photos, you know, some of the larger items. This is a new paper kit that I have out. It's called Retro Christmas Junk Journaling Kit. And there is a whole page of Christmas uh, inspired quotes or sayings. This are from like lyrics from songs. So this one is Christmas waves a magic wand over this world and behold, everything is softer and more beautiful. Norman Vincent Peale. There's just a little card. Anyway, so there's fun quotes, and they're all throughout, um, and there's a whole page of them. Let's see. There's fun journaling cards. There's another one of the quotes that I made into a little tag. Let's see. The freebie this time that'll be that it already is on buy me a coffee it's just these two of little envelopes like this aren't they shaped so cute so I only printed mine on one side of the paper but you could print it on both sides if you wanted to that's something else too about this paper is I included five different backing papers like there's a green there's a pink there is kind of a a tanny neutral um, kind of this red color and a blue so lots of little pieces of ephemera and things to play with all right so then when you get to this last page it closes like this and then it opens back up just for this one spread okay so I've got a nice pocket here I've got a pocket here this is actually a big pocket back here and I forgot to put anything in it so we'll make sure we do that when we decorate ours and then another great big pocket for extra papers um, again I'm kind of thinking this could be a fun one for Christmas photos and memories and stuff that we might have so anyway, very excited about it. It'll also be another fun one that you could make and maybe give to somebody that needs some gift tags or something for the holidays. So I love it and I'm really excited about it. There's no sewing and it actually is gonna assemble Similar, well, things are falling out. I'll have to look at that. Um, similarly to a smaller folio I did recently, uh, so there's no sewing and it's a pretty easy hinge type construction that puts it together. And then I added that extra flip on the back. So the finished measurements is right at eight and a half wide by eight tall. So it's a little bit different orientation as well, which I thought was kind of fun. I hope you do too. So you can use any papers that you have. We are starting with basically eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper like this that print out you know how whatever you want but when I cut mine down I'm starting with um one two three four five pieces that's kind of the basic construction and then we'll add some of those extra pages but five pieces that measure eight inches by ten and a half so eight inches tall and 10 and a half inches wide. And again, you could use scrapbook paper, other digital paper, you could get this kit if you like it. So the backing papers, I did put print them on um, the other side of these larger pages just so that it's nice and pretty as we put it together. So you need to pick your the five you're gonna start with. I'm gonna set that to the side so that I have lots of room. And Let's see, so one, two, three, four, five, actually I have six kind of prepped. So I don't think it really matters. 
right, I'll save this one to do something else with. And then real quick, let me show you, these are the ephemera sheets. So some really fun pockets, two large tags. Here's eight journaling cards that you could also like cut into a tag shape if you wanted to. These are actually four more pockets, just some different shapes. And I'll show you when we get to the decorating how to fold these easily, because it didn't print with lines, but it's not hard. And then some larger stamps, some more tags, and these you can keep this size or trim smaller, of course, or even punch circles or something. This is the page of quotes that I'm really excited about because I love that and I sprinkled them throughout. And then this is the freebie that you can get on Buy Me A Coffee. I realized too, by the way, last my last freebie, it didn't upload correctly on Buy Me A Coffee, and somebody like two days after it had been live told me that she couldn't get the link. I fixed it. If you tried to grab it and you were unsuccessful, please go back again um, and check out my freebies. And if it's ever not working for you, just send me a message because I definitely want it to be right for you. Okay. And then here's just some more pages in the kit. All right, so I'm gonna set these aside because we're gonna start with these. Now, we are going to score. I'm gonna do a little bit of scoring. So I'm gonna pull out my scoreboard. And I've only made this folio once, so I'm gonna be looking at the one that I made. I took a few notes, but really trying to pay attention to what we're doing. I am using some of the some different pages than the ones I decorated that one with. I'm trying to decide which one I want to be the front of my folio. I don't know. It's always so hard for me to decide. How about this one? I'll just do this one with the, like it looks like a little Christmas village kind of idea. Okay, so for this first one that is going to be the cover, we are gonna score at one and a half inches and at 10 inches. So you're just gonna have this little bitty, little bitty piece here that'll get folded over. And then the one and a half. And it'll look like that. So that's gonna be our cover. All right, and we'll set that aside. And then the next page, and again, I haven't really thought through which page is which, and I'm just, I'm not gonna worry about it at this point. It's just gonna be what it's going to be. This page score at eight and a half. Correct? That's what it says. So we're gonna go that I was paying attention when I did my notes. So I scored this one at eight and a half. And this is gonna be page two. So just set that one aside. Now the third page, I want you to score at one and a half inches and at seven inches. Guys, as always, I will have your measurements and your scoring in the description so you don't have to worry about trying to write it down or um, follow along that way. You can refer to the description of the video and it'll have the measurements for you. I'm gonna wait to fold that one just so I get through the scoring. Okay, we're gonna do another one that is at one and a half and 10 inches. This was like the first one we did. And then the last page, let's do at, this one you're gonna do at a half an inch. And sometimes this one is hard for me to hold in my scoreboard, but I, I succeeded. Half an inch and then eight and a half inches. Okay, and for now, we don't need this anymore. We may need it when we're adding some of our other pages later. I kind of, to be perfectly honest, when I was decorating the one that I showed you guys, I was making some of the decisions based on the pattern of the paper, which I tend to do. I can still give you the measurements, but I, I, I tend to craft that way. As you guys know, when I am brave enough to say I'm gonna craft on the fly, right? <laughs> okay, go through and fold all of your pages. I'm gonna kind of keep mine in order and I'll tell you which ones we're referring to as we go. 
Okay, this is going to be that kind of pockety flip page. Okay, so the first page that you scored, you scored it at one and a half and a half an inch. This is going to be your cover. Now, if you want to do some inking before you start attaching and gluing, feel free. I'm probably not going to do too much. This paper has quite a bit of pigment on it, and I can ink a little more later, but we'll do a little bit of inking, and especially when I'm doing it to show you guys some of the folds. And these have some, what I consider some of the traditional Christmas colors, but I called it retro Christmas because it's kind of the... I don't know what I think of like, and somebody will probably tell me that's the wrong decade or whatever, but I'm thinking about the 1920s. And I think there's the, these are the colors I think of, kind of this color blue and this pinky red and kind of the lighter, well, different shades of green, but anyway, I love it. All right, this is just to reinforce this edge of your front cover. It's just folded over and then it, it gives it a pretty look and then I added intentionally when I put this pocket on I brought it over to leave a little piece a strip of the, the color of the paper um, but it just kind of reinforces that edge we fold it over and it gives it some thickness so we are going to go ahead and glue that down and I'm using my Lineco brand PVA wet white glue and if you want to see some of the supplies I use, you can head over to my Amazon shop if I can get my glue to start. I, full disclosure, I'm gonna close this one up. I left this one unplugged last night. I didn't put the cap on it. Ah! So we're gonna pull out, this is this exact same glue just in another little bottle, let's hope it works. Okay, so what I was saying is we're gonna just glue this one little flap down. If you want to see some of the supplies I use, head over to my Amazon storefront and um, you can check out the papers and glues and different things that I like to use. It's an affiliate link. Amazon will pay me a few pennies if you end up making a purchase, no cost to you. Do not feel like you need to do that because that is not what really helps pay my bills, but I do appreciate it and it is a nice, a nice little bonus, but it, it's just to help you guys. Oh, what am I doing? Don't, don't, don't do what I just did. Glue down this flap and then stop and Pam, stop talking. I was acting like I was going to make a pocket and I'm not making a pocket. This is the hinge for my journal. Okay, so lay it down on your workspace like this and then you're going to take page two. Page two is the one that we scored at eight and a half inches. Okay, page two is going to become a little pocket here. So I'm gonna add a little ink to this edge here because it'll be difficult to ink once it does get glued down in a few minutes. So I'm gonna ink here so you can see where we're gonna glue page two to the cover. So you have yours laid down. Make sure you have it turned the right way. And we are going to glue this page to this hinge just like this. So I am going to add glue to this section and then lay that paper down. And it will come together pretty easily. Now, again, I'm using a 90 pound Nina cardstock that I printed on. You could go a little bit heavier if your printer can handle a little heavier cardstock if you want to. I am layering quite a bit and adding pockets and things to mine. I think it feels substantial enough the way uh, my, mine, mine feels at this point. You know, I think it feels pretty good and I'm not too worried about it. But if you want yours to be a little bit heavier cardstock or you want some more layers, you could definitely do that. Now, hopefully things are lining up. A lot of this is going to depend on how carefully we trimmed our paper. <laughs> Did we cut straight? I'm already seeing a little edge here that I'm probably going to trim off but everything's looking good. I have my cover, which will eventually have a pocket. My second page that's here. And I just realized that is not the order I, oh, 
Oh, yes, it is. This is the extra flippy page that I put in later. Ignore me. This page gets added later. It's a portion of one of these full pages. It's not one of the five. Okay, so this is the page we just added. And now we are going to add this one that will become this flip pocket. And I left it open and not a pocket. I called it a flip pocket, but this flip page, and in fact, I even did mine like this. And we added, I added a pocket here. This is all the decorating part and where you can really get creative and make yours, make yours your own. But the first thing we need to do is glue this section right here to this spine right here. So that's what we are going to do. Just making sure everything's the way I want it. Okay, so I'm gonna add glue to this one. They, If we scored correctly and folded correctly, they're the same size, so I could put the glue on that panel, but I like putting it on this one and holding everything down secure with my little fingers. And you do want to make sure with whatever adhesive you're using that you are giving this time to dry before you start playing and flipping with it too much. The glue, the adhesive I'm using does tend to grab pretty quickly, but you don't want it to fall apart before you even get started. Okay. Let's see where we're at. I always like to just check and make sure I haven't confused myself. So page one, page two, and it has this fun little flip page. And then I am referring to my, my book. Okay, now we have the page. This is the one we folded just, or scored and folded just like our cover. So we scored this one at one and a half inches right here and a half an inch and it folded over do not glue this one down yet wait don't glue it down we're going to use it to attach our back flippy page so this one is going to get attached this, this panel to this panel. And I'm doing it this way because I want to still see that tree. Sometimes you get to kind of play with and decide which of your patterns. And I think this one is okay. I'm going to trim. I didn't trim this the best and I can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it off. And I'm going to add a little ink because I am going to see this where I glue it down. I hope you guys like this new design folio. It seems a little confusing, but I, I think it actually comes together pretty quickly. Please let me know if you're struggling or, or if you have any questions. But um, sometimes I know when I'm following people, I have to pause <laughs> and hit rewind and listen again sometimes. I hope you don't have to do that too much, but I do think it comes together really nicely. Okay, so again, the one and a half inch hinge to the one and a half inch section, the hinge here. So again, we will add glue. We are having um, a little bit of strange weather here in Virginia. It's um, tomorrow is October 31st, so today's the 30th, and it's like 82 degrees outside. <laughs> I was outside earlier and I'm like, wow, this is different. So kind of interesting. We'll see, it's supposed to get cold again, but very interesting weather here in the southern United States. Okay. And again, I kind of just keep checking and making sure everything is lining up and looking good. And everything. So again, if we scored correctly and we have all these little pieces that fold, fold back and forth, your pages are either smaller intentionally, like to be a flippy page, or they're the same the same width and they fit together. Isn't that exciting? Okay, now this is the back. And if you recall, when we get to the back of ours, we get to the last page and we close it, it actually opens up again. And I, I just thought that was fun. So we are gonna do that and we are going to attach this 
hinge piece here that's the half an inch to this one. So I don't know if the ink's going to help you guys see what I'm doing, but I think it will. Oops, not like that, like this. Okay, so maybe the easiest way to do it is this is going to be our back, ends up being our back cover and our back flap. So I'm going to lay it on the left hand side. We scored it at a half an inch and at eight and a half inches. So have it like laying like this. And then I'm gonna, gonna, going to open this one up and we're gonna glue this half inch section right here to that, that panel. And again, I hope that makes sense. So this was that last page we just put in right here with the panel. I'm just flipping it over and I'm gonna glue it right here. And this is where you could also use some two-sided tape if you wanted to. There's some different adhesive options. I would not go glue stick, even if you're using the really good glue stick. You just do not want your adhesive to let go because this is everything that's holding your little flippy boulder folio together. And having that inked right there helps me hopefully get this lined up nice and neat. Hopefully we did this right. <laughs> there we go. So let's check it out and see how we did. And then we'll add that extra page I told you about and maybe the great big pockets. So cover. There's gonna be an extra page installed right here in a large pocket. It's this page. And it's one of those that kind of, and I, and I like that. You know, it kind of has that fun little flippy to it because of how it's attached. See the hinge sticks out. That's intentional by design. Okay, and then you got that tree. And then this is basically kind of our back cover, but then when you close it, you have a whole nother fun section to look at. And we'll add a pocket and some things back here as well. And again, as we layer these papers, it gives it some nice heft and weight to it. Okay, so to make this pocket, or this page, you think I could talk. Like I said, I have been working on this for days. So I am a little bit, um, I'm a little bit over it, but in a good way, right? Like excited to finally be making it and showing it to you guys. So this page right here is da -da -da, five and three quarters wide and then the, the eight inch tall. So this is where, and I guess I'll just use this one because you definitely want it to have... Um, be printed on both sides. I kind of wish it was a different color. Let me see if I print it on the back of any of these. Oh, here's a blue one. So maybe we'll use the blue one. Let's do that. So that way we have a little bit of difference. So I need to cut this at five and three quarter inches. So let me run over here to my big paper cutter and do that really quick. Five and three quarters. Right there. And then I also scored a hinge on it. Oh my goodness. So that, and again, see how I did it by the pattern of the paper, which is the paper I chose. And I'm like, this is going to be cute. So the whole section was five and three quarters. And then this section was almost an inch. So we're going to do ours with a one inch hinge. So I better write this down so that when I get ready to type this up for you guys, extra page is five and three quarters by eight, score at four and three quarters. And I'll show you that right now because that's gonna give us that one inch section, even though this pattern on this paper didn't quite lend itself to the same design it's okay <laughs> four and three quarters right here
find the book. Okay. So I'm gonna fold this nice and neat. And this, this hinge is gonna fit right here, just to be a, an extra page, we're gonna end up with a pocket back here. But because I'm going to see this, I do want that little bit of extra inking. And especially with the pattern, you know, not being that same piece that had that little strip that looked so cute there, it's still gonna look super cute. We can always add ribbon or something else to it if we want to, but we're going to do it this way so that you actually see the pattern on the paper instead of gluing it down like that, so to speak. Okay, so you scored it at four and three quarters. We are going to add ink just to this one inch section on the back. This section right here. Okay. And I'm going to confess to you that when I made the two big pockets for the front cover and the back cover, I kind of selected the sizes based on the pattern, the papers I chose, which is fine, you know. We can still, it shows you how you can then use whatever pages you want because even though this is a different page, they both look good. I mean, they, they, they both look good for this extra page. And I added a little tab to the original one. Super cute, one of the pockets that comes with the kit. So I'll have all of those for the video, for the next set of the video, um, next set. Uh, the next episode, <laughs> I'll have those all cut out ahead of time so that we can then glue down, but I am gonna show you how to fold them up. I think that'll be helpful. So I wanna make a big pocket to go here and I want to make a big pocket to go on this section. And I did a vertical pocket, that deep one that I told you I forgot to put anything in on this section. So we'll make those three pockets next. Now these papers do not have to be printed on both sides if we don't want them to be, because you're not gonna see the other side. So we may use that one and maybe, oh, there's that piece, but it wasn't printed on the other side. It may be this one. So, to get the triangle piece, like I said, I just kind of eyeballed it the way I wanted to, but I'm gonna measure it for you guys and show you how to get the angle that I have. So we're gonna do, we're going to do the one on the back cover first. And look, bad habits. I'm going to close up my ink. It's my newer ink pad. And hopefully it won't dry out. Okay. We are going to mark one and three quarter inches in. And I'm using a pencil so I can erase this later. I know that's going to be hard for you guys to see. This paper it has so much going on with it. And... I did six inches. So again, I'm putting my ruler at six inches to the right edge of the paper, and I'm making a mark right here. And I'm going to connect these two lines, if I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. And this is going to make a pocket the same size that I made for the original folio. So one and three quarter inches from the right, at the top, six inches from the right at the bottom, and then connect the line. And we're gonna have a lovely pocket. Now often, if I'm also being honest, I'll eyeball it and just cut it, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> if I'm not worrying about trying to replicate it, right? I will, again, sometimes just use what I think looks good based on the pattern of the paper that I've chosen. And you can do that too. I'm trying, I talk about that simply to give you permission that if whatever paper you're using, if you don't think the measurement I give you, it messes up the pattern or you think something else would look better, please 
feel free to do that. Okay, so that's going to be the pocket here. Now, I also, like, I know I keep flipping this around, and I'm so sorry. I had somebody leave me a comment one time and said, I like your project, but you flip it around so much I can't follow you. And I'm sorry. This is just how I craft. So if you're struggling, please forgive me. I'm not meaning to be rude with my flipping. We need a pocket the same size, but just the opposite orientation. Now, I say that, but to conserve paper, I am going to make this pocket just a smidge smaller, and it's not going to matter. It's going to be okay. This is going to cover it up, and I'm going to be happy with it. So all I am going to do is take the pocket I just cut out. I'm going to flip it over so that I have the correct orientation for my front cover. And I'm going to use this as a template. I could draw the line. I'm just going to hold it here and cut it. And we're going to have this fun triangle piece of paper we can do something with. At some point, that could even be a fun tuck spot somewhere, couldn't it? Ooh, we'll save that. And I'll think of something. Now, I have this kind of funky edge here. I could trim it off, but I kind of like it. Everything about this paper kit makes me feel a little fun and funky. Fun and funky. So we are going to ink, and I am going to glue this down with this fun little funky corner and call it a day. Now later, when I go through, I will be adding the quotes and all the little pieces of ephemera, and who knows what will end up happening over here. But again, not worried about it. See, that's what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna go ahead and install, this is the front cover pocket. I am going to add glue to the top just to make it nice and secure along the side and then just along the bottom. I'm not gonna worry about the funny shape here. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap again intentionally so that I can see the, the kind of ready, rusty color. And I did it here too, and I like that design element, okay? So, that was the front. Now we're gonna go to the back, I'm trying to go a little more slowly. And this pocket is going to get installed right here. We'll go ahead and glue it in, and then we'll work on the pocket that's going to be installed on that page. Partly that is, again, to give more thickness to that paper and to have fun, right? To have a little bit of a pocket. I am adding glue to all three sides. Not, not the angle. I could leave the top open, but this is such a large pocket. I'm really not worried about, you know, leaving that real estate there. But you can if you want to. You could leave this piece open. Be very careful. Try not to wiggle it too much because it'll still stick, but that will take up space in my pocket, you know, as that glue spreads. <laughs> takes up space. Okay, now we need a piece right here. Before we do that, I'm going to glue this pocket down, and I'm going to make this, I'm going to put a line of glue right in the middle, so it's going to be two smaller side load pockets. I even closed up a portion of these on the original one by adding some quotes and things. The size of the ephemera with this kit lends itself better to a little bit smaller tuck spot. But you could not do that and leave this full open if you want to. Again, I have these large, large pockets, so I feel like I've got plenty of space. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And see how it keeps sliding out of there anyway? It might have helped if I hid brought the glue down on this one even further. It's this quote here that is closing mine up. So I am, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue right in there to make this pocket a touch more snug. 
And maybe those won't keep flying out. We'll check on it in a little bit. Okay, let me measure what I did here. And then we'll double check it against this one. This is five and a quarter by eight. And I did leave a little bit of a, again, a trim so you could see the blue. So I think I'm gonna go five and a half by eight on this one. Five and a half if I have it, if I can find a five and a half by eight piece. And this is where I did not prepare the best. I'm gonna step over and very quickly chop up five and a half by eight and be right back. Don't leave me. And this is gonna fit in that little section perfectly. I need to figure out a way to bring a larger trimmer over here, don't I? Ooh, pretty. This has that little piece there too. Now, my intention with this pocket is you don't have to make it a pocket. You could just glue this paper down for decoration and to make it thicker. I forgot to put something in the large top load pocket of my prototype. That's okay, it's there if I ever wanna use it, right? So we're gonna do the same thing. We may not put anything in it for a while, but it's gonna be there if we want it. And I think the reason, or I know the reason I forgot about it, is I added, again, because of the design of the paper, I thought, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cute to add this pocket right here. See, and that's one of the pockets that comes in the kit and I didn't wanna cover up this Christmas tree, so it just, it worked. But then when I put this tag here, I kind of forgot about that big pocket back there. But it's there if I ever wanna use it. So this one, I probably won't put a pocket here because I'm not gonna to wanna to cover up that ornament. And I probably will wanna put a nice big giant tag back there. If you don't want it the full depth of your folio, bring your glue up and then shorter tags and pieces of ephemera won't fall all the way in, okay? I'm gonna bring mine up a couple of inches. Not really like halfway, but a couple of inches so that it doesn't have to be a super duper, I'm gonna bring it to about right here. It doesn't have to be a tag or a journaling card that's oh you know eight inches or taller to stick out the top, but still nice and has a nice depth. And I'm just picking, trying to have approximately the same amount of space. This is the where the hinge is, where it folds over. So between here and here. I think it turned out really pretty. So now we are going to close it up. It's looking good, it feels really good, it's feeling sturdy. And then in the video that'll go out tomorrow, I will, y'all will join me hopefully, and we will add ribbon and quotes and pockets and tags and journaling cards and all kinds of fun things. I don't know why that one's doing that. Let's go ahead and glue this pocket too. Whoa. Glue it down so it doesn't confuse us. I left it open, we'll see. Okay, so that's that pocket. And then I'm leaving this open to be a flip. I haven't decided which way it's going to flip, but there we go. And then that's our last page and then our fun back cover. Okay, I hope you guys like it. I hope you will join me tomorrow when we make this one look just as fabulous and we'll have a lot of fun. Please leave me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so you know when I um, drop new content. Thanks for joining me and until next time, have a great day.